Would you like to know how to take an old tree round like this and turn it into something beautiful, elegant, like this? Follow me for a little bit, I'll show you how to do it. Everything from the tree round to the maple to the walnut to the epoxy. Hang out with me, we'll get started right now. Let's flatten this thing out. I don't own an expensive flattening jig from Woodpecker or anybody else like that. Nothing against them, I just don't own one. So I had to create this thing. And it seems to work pretty good. I mean, it all came out pretty flat. I need to do some sanding. That's more or less to my router bit and not to the jig itself. And after I get through with a little bit of sanding, or a lot of it, I have to modify this in order to run it through my planer and get everything all flat on all sides. So we're gonna set it up just a little bit and then whip out my handy dandy DeWalt track saw. And I know you see a lot of DeWalt stuff inside of my video, but I am not sponsored by anybody. So no worries, I'm not gonna try and sell you on DeWalt or on any other product in this video, though some of them are really good and DeWalt's track saw is a good one. So if you're looking for one, I personally would recommend it, but not gonna sell you on it. Now that we have split it in half, and yes, it goes back pretty nice, we're gonna run it through the planer. Shoulda took the bark off first, but you live and you learn. I'm not a professional woodworker, just learning as I go. Get it nice and flat on both sides. This also makes it so much easier to sand in a little bit. Now we'll get rid of that bark that, once again, I should have gotten rid of before I ran it through the planer. But once again, you live and you learn. And I'm living and learning. Once I've got the majority of it off, I have a 30 grit disc on here. I'm just gonna clean it all up. Almost looks like we are cleaning skin off of potatoes, but Turns out to look really, really pretty. I like it. Almost done with the first half. But I won't take you through the second. Now here I'm setting up my bandsaw because I need to cut this again in half, but in a different way. Why, you might ask? Because I want to build this table with a phone charger in it that you can't see. So we're gonna cut it in half. Once that's done, we're going to show you that it is cut in half. And now we have to put four sections of the table back together before we'll actually have a table. I might as well make it complicated. Here's my phone charger. Seven and a half amp on. Um, hopefully it charges really well. Works good with nothing on top of the charger, but I need to know how thick I can make the material above it and still be able to set something on it and charge. And that seems to be about the max, is about an eighth of an inch. You go beyond an eighth of an inch and that phone charger doesn't seem to want to pick it up anymore. So we're gonna set it up here, mark it, and then use the handy dandy router we're going to hog out some material. Keep in mind, whenever you're hogging out material, don't take your bit down to as deep as it's supposed to go, unless that's only about an eighth of an inch. Do it in several passes so you don't dull up your blade, you don't foul up your machine, and you don't break anything or hurt yourself. Keep your area cleaned out. Now we're gonna check and just make sure that it's as deep as we're supposed to be. And keep in mind, you don't wanna go through the other side, but you do need to make sure that you're taking into account your depth and whatever material you're gonna use to finish this, because that's gonna add a layer of something to it, depending on what you do. Let's just double check and make sure I didn't go stupid on it, make sure it still works. And voila, we have charging. Good deal. All right, let's move on. I need a hole for the, the wire to come through. Now we can fish our wire out one side and prepare to 
permanently affix the charger inside of the table. And to do that, we're going to be using epoxy. Why? Because I like epoxy and it also helps to make it solid. But before I can pour epoxy around it, I have to make sure that that cable is not coming undone and it's not going to let the epoxy leak into it. And there you have it, black epoxy. Going backwards, I would have used white uh, just because it wouldn't have shown in the wood as much. Glue it all together, lots of clamps, and let's start on the leg assembly. Here I have some walnut. It is one inch by two inches. Uh, as far as the stock material went and I believe we are cutting off 14 and a half and 12 and a half inch sections and here I want to do my own version of table legs because I just wanted to see if I could do it so I marked it out freehand went over to my bandsaw and cut and here I am going to prepare to put the two halves back together so I put some double-sided sticky tape on the melamine get them put together but first I need to make sure that I am going to go perfect just like if I had jointed them and I'm using my track saw as a jointer to make sure both sides will go together properly and they do I will say that gluing this together was a pain only because trying to get clamps on those uneven circular sides was not fun at all i probably switched clamps up five or six different times before i finally got it to hold together the way that i wanted it to i'm sure there are people out there with way better ideas than mine but 10 clamps later and you got it now i'm going to continue on by uh, shaping my legs making sure all of them are shaped identical so i don't have any weird looking things on one side that aren't on the other side for that I'll be using my router table with the inker lift. Make sure they're all perfectly flush with each other. Then we'll go back and do some sanding, which I won't force you guys to watch that part of it. You've seen videos with sanding and sanding techniques. Uh, and put a round over on all sides of the leg just so that they're nice and soft to the eyes. Make sure that I am going to come together the way that I want it to. It looks good. I like the way that I did it. I would probably take out that little back section on the back of the legs for the way that I did the box underneath if I were to redo it again. But in the meantime, while I'm still contemplating how I want to do the box on the legs, we are going to hand carve a river through this little round just to add a little character each their own on what they want to do in this case you don't have to carve a river out you could have just done the tabletop and it would have looked probably just as good I want it to look like it's pouring over the sides so I route out the sides and I'm gonna burn the river underneath though I didn't really have to it was just in case if it was still a little more transparent than I thought it was gonna be it did not end up that way so burning it was not a waste of time, but a learning experience. Now I'm taping off where the river or the water, or sorry, the epoxy in this case is actually gonna go over because I don't want it to leak out as I am pouring into this section. But once again, I do want it to go over the sides. So from a side view or a top view, it looks like it goes all the way through the table. I like super clear. Um, I like their tabletop, liquid glass. I just prefer their material. And here you will see me using my little stir stick to just kind of put it on there. I'm going to use the spatula, spread it out. I want it to fill in any cracks in the table with the exact same epoxy and give it that dark, rich look. That's what I'm going for on this table. As I'm doing it, I'm pushing it into the river so that I can get as much material as I need on the top of it without it actually being like a tabletop. I didn't want it to be thick yet. I just wanted it to be almost more like a sealer. Make sure you pop all your bubbles and let's get back to the table legs. 
Now we're cutting grooves with the table saw for the box lid, I guess you would call it, to slide in and out uh, to house the phone charger cable. See the walnut legs there? Use some pin nails to hold it in place along with the glue that we're going to come back and add the maple dowels or pins. And I do apologize, I didn't do a video on drilling the holes for the maple pins. I didn't realize I wasn't filming until I got to the point of cutting out or off the hangover of the maple pins, which is slightly irritating because I was somewhat impressed with myself for coming up with the way I was going to do it. Uh, but hey, it is what it is. At least you get to see this part. Using wood glue and sanding as a filler, filler to match up the grain, match up the uh, wood so it doesn't look like anything separated. And now I've taped off the top because I'm going to put one coat of clear over it. But once again, I don't want this to be my tabletop. I just want it to be completely sealed. So I just poured it in the blue tape, waited until I had it all sort of set up, and then I used a brush to make sure all of the side was completely coated. And then I used my spatula to pull it off to the side, make sure I cleaned the underneath. This is not the final coat. It is just to make sure that when I do the final coat, I don't get any bubbles that are coming up that are going to be hard to fight the entire time. Still looks pretty good though. Let's get those bubbles. Pop, 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 pop. Teach your own on whether you want to torch or you want to use the uh, heat gun. Here for the base and the legs, we are going to use a wipe on poly. We're going to end up with two coats. You're only going to see the first coat here. And got the little hands involved because it's not really hard to take a cloth and wipe on poly. Let's fold the charger back up, put it back inside of there. Just so you know, because you can't see it in there, the inside of that base is actually black epoxy. So it's like glass underneath there. We're going to sand the first layer of epoxy that I put on there, or second layer, I guess you'd call it that. Clean it off with some uh, rubbing alcohol. Make sure our dust is completely gone. Lay our plastic bag down. Pull our table up. Put it up on shims so that we don't get epoxy on the feet. And we're going to blue tape again. But this time we're blue taping because we're going to let the clear set up for a little while until it starts to get tacky. Then remove the blue tape and let it go over the sides so that it will not only level out on its own and do its thing, but that it will be great. Have to close the garage door. Don't want the dust flying around everywhere. Let's pour it. Man, that stuff is beautiful. Comes out crystal clear. If you just stir it for the five minutes it calls for, it works great. I guess I should say if you measure out your stuff the right way. We're gonna pop any and all bubbles that we have coming up, if we have any. And I didn't really have a lot, but here against the side I would see them. And even though I knew I was going to let it pour over the side, still had to pop them. And this is how it turns out. That is a beautiful table. Leave in the comments below what you think of the table, what you would have changed, and what you would have done different. Thanks.